Hello and thanks for joining us for this Wednesday morning edition of Newsbreak coming to you from Seoul, South Korea. Filling in for Han Dan this week, I'm Mark Broom. We start with the global response to North Korea's latest provocation. The UN Security Council has spoken with one voice, strongly condemning the regime's recent ballistic missile launches. It says the launches were a grave violation of the nation's international obligations and vowed further action if the threats continue. Gonsoir has the details. The members of the Security Council strongly condemned the ballistic missile launches conducted by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea on 5 September 2016. It just took four hours for the UN Security Council to unanimously adopt a press statement against North Korea's recent violations, namely its launch on Monday of three medium-range ballistic missiles off its east coast. Issued after a closed-door emergency meeting Tuesday, the statement said all members were deeply concerned about the launches that were carried out in flagrant disregard of its demands. That China, North Korea's only major ally, did not hesitate in giving its prompt approval is said to be related to the timing of the provocation. This launch, which I would note took place while China was hosting the G20 summit, once again shows the DPRK's blatant disregard for its international obligations. The deputy chief of South Korea's mission to the UN said the international community should send a clear and unequivocal message to North Korea. If they continue to provoke and violent, violate the international commitment and uh, sanctions, they will face a much stronger and insurmountable uh, and, and significant countermeasures. The strong words mean North Korea could face even tougher punitive measures if it stays on its current path. The strongest UN sanctions to date were imposed on the regime after its fourth nuclear test in January. Tuesday's press statement was issued just 11 days after a statement on North Korea's submarine launched ballistic missile test last month. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye is in Laos for this year's ASEAN summit. The South Korean leader will attend a series of multilateral summits, then sit down with the Japanese Prime Minister for talks that will focus on North Korea's nuclear program. Our Song Ju son who is travelling with the President, files this report from Laos. On the final day of 2015, ASEAN member nations officially launched the ASEAN community in a bid to strengthen synergy and collaboration in the region. At this year's meeting, South Korea will seek to river cooperation with the massive economic bloc, a region with a combined GDP of two and a half trillion U.S. dollars and home to 630 million people. At the ASEAN summit, Seoul will seek to reinforce cooperation with the ASEAN community. And at the ASEAN Plus Three summit, the 10 ASEAN member countries, plus the leaders of South Korea, Japan and China, will review their achievements over the past year and discuss future cooperation. President Ba will also use the chance to win greater support from the international community to press North Korea for its nuclear and missile provocations. After a summit on Tuesday with U.S. President Barack Obama, where the two leaders vowed to counter North Korean threats with all possible measures, President Ba will now discuss the North Korean issue with her Japanese counterpart, Shinzo Abe. At their second bilateral summit this year, President Park and Prime Minister Abe will center their focus on the North Korean nuclear issue and ways to develop bilateral relations and cooperation. After having garnered Russia and China's commitment to implement the UN sanctions to denuclearize North Korea, and now backed by the cooperation and support of the U.S., President Park will sit down with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe on Wednesday. Song ji Arirang News, Vientiane. The interim leader of the minor opposition People's Party is giving a policy speech to the National Assembly this morning. Park ji is focusing on ways to revitalize South Korea's economy and improve relations with North Korea. He is expected to lay out how government policies have failed to rejuvenate the national economy. On North Korea, the minor opposition leader is likely to call for constructive dialogue with Pyongyang and question the effectiveness of the U.S. anti-missile system THAAD that's set to be deployed on South Korean soil. He also plans to emphasize the need to establish an independent body to investigate corruption scandals involving senior public officials. 
With just over 60 days left on the campaign trail, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump start the final stretch to the November 8th election basically even in the latest polls. This is great news for a resurgent Trump who had been lagging far behind Clinton just a few weeks ago. Park Jong Hong has the details. With the U.S. presidential election just two months away now, the race for the White House is too close to call. A joint poll by CNN and polling agency ORC shows Hillary Clinton leading Donald Trump by a mere three percentage points with 44 percent among registered voters. But among likely voters, Trump has the upper hand with 45 percent to Clinton's 43 percent. As the margin of error is plus or minus 3.5 percent, the figures put the two rivals in a statistical dead heat. Analysts say it's a major comeback for the Republican presidential nominee. What's more, among independents not affiliated with either party, the poll found Trump is ahead by a whopping 20 percentage points, with 49 percent support, suggesting Clinton's post-convention surge has virtually evaporated. Against this backdrop, some pundits predict the November 8th election will depend on moderate supporters of Trump, namely how many of them actually show up to cast their ballots. Park Jong Hong, Arirang News. And those are the top stories we're following on this Wednesday morning here in Seoul. Stay tuned to Arirang TV. We'll be back with our next news bulletin at noon, Korea time. So until then, goodbye.